Hey, Stake Eagle fans, Natsu is here with you for another video on the Strike Eagle. Uh, today we're going to talk about air-to-ground bombing, and in particular we're going to do uh, seat up bombing, showing you the different uh, dive passes, 30, 20, and 10 degree wires, and how to work to get on those uh, using some visual canopy references. So right now we're kind of loaded out for bear with uh, the various uh, dumb bombs. I've got a Mark 82 high drags, Mark 82 low drags, and a Mark 84 to give us a little bit of a flavor of what's going on. So before we start, I want to give a shout out to one of our uh, Discord uh, users in Rasbam. Uh, Coffee has been doing some God's work on doing a bunch of great liveries for the for the program. Uh, he's been working really tirelessly to do it. So he made up a special uh, Strike Eagle for me. Uh, this is the F-15 Stake Eagle. Uh, it's an inside joke. You guys can go into the Discord and, uh, and get the inside story on that. I'm not going to go into it now. But uh, pretty cool. And my favorite part about it, uh, besides the, uh, the Stake uh, livery on the side... Is uh, I've got my uh, anime cat girl, um, so nice decoration for the uh, for this occasion. All right, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into the uh, into the jet. Oops. So what you can see now is uh, we're set up uh, with uh, the bombs. I don't have any packed programs, so I'll go ahead and set those up for you. So uh, we've got uh, Mark eighty twos. I've got C dip. We'll choose C dip step nose tail. Uh, and then we'll do the other programs later. So I'm going to start out doing a 30-degree dive and then work my way down to a 10-degree high drag uh, on that. And if you remember, uh, we're in air-to-air -air master mode right now. So to get any bombs off the jet, you've got to switch to air-to-ground. So I can either push the button right here and notice that switches to air-to-ground master mode. Or I can HOTAS it by just going castle forward. We'll switch back and forth between uh, air-to-ground and air-to-air. -air. Final thing is make sure we get the master arm on. So there's master arm. I've got the gun cross. The other thing I always look at is do I have a ready light down in the packs? Because even if I have the master arm on, if I don't have all the packs steps satisfied, I won't get the ready light. So that's the other clue that if I don't have all these conditions set correctly, I'm not going to get a ready light. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, jump into it, and we'll get set up for the 30-degree dive pass. Okay, so we've set ourselves up here on a... Uh, Conventional pattern around the the targets. Essentially, what you're going to see if you can if you can look in the VR, there's a bunch of uh, BTRs laid out on the runway that will do some various bombing stuff, and then we'll go out in the desert and uh, pick some more uh, realistic setups. But this is just for the uh, setting up the the delivery parameters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work uh, down from high to low. So I'm going to do some 30 degree dive bombs, and I'll give you some visual references. Uh, if you can find uh, uh, reference material from old uh, manuals or whatever that give you specific distances and altitudes for a specific uh, wire or angle for your dive bomb, that's great. And I'll, I can give you some of those in a little bit. But what I really want to show you is, is how it works in real life, where you're going to use kind of visual canopy references to set yourself up for specific dive angles. So right now, uh, if you look at the canopy rail, I'm, I'm pretty much going to use the canopy rail as my reference. So for about a 30 degree dive bomb, somewhere down here, uh, just above the rail and just below the handle of the, uh, of the front cockpit canopy is about a 30 degree wire. What you're gonna do is we're gonna roll in on this little uh, BTR sitting out on that pad. So you can kinda, and again, it's, 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 a, it's a wag, a, a wild ass guess. It, there's nothing super precise about it, but that should get you really well on the ball, ballpark for a 30 degree dive, dive angle. And this works at all altitudes and distances. So if you find yourself really high, much higher than, like right now we're at essentially 7,000 hat above the ground, 10,000 MSL with a 3,100 foot runway. Uh, if you find yourself higher than this, you just need to move further away to get that same reference. Uh, if you want to get to a l lesser dive angle, uh, go lower or move closer, I'm sorry, or move further away from the target to get that shallower dive angle. So right now what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it a couple different key references uh, uh, to, to show you what we're looking for for this CDIP stuff. I know a lot of you guys have been doing this in other airplanes, but I'm just going to kind of give you the, the book answer for how we do it in Strike Hill, and that really should apply to pretty much any other platform. So a couple rules of thumb is pretty much anything over about 10 degrees, what we're going to look for is uh, we're going to look to put the target pretty much halfway down the, what's called the DIL, the displayed impact line with the, the reticle and then the pipper's little dot. So about halfway down the displayed impact line is about where you want to roll out with the target. That gives you a good 
amount of time to track the target uh, before you get too low. For a 10 degree dive, you want it at about a third of the way down the, uh, the deal, so more up here, a third of the way down from the velocity vector. So 10 degree, about a third of the way down, anything above that 10, uh, 20s, 30s, and 45s, you want to start with it about halfway down the uh, display impact line. And, what, and again, I'm going to use that canopy reference to, uh, to initially get myself set up. And then when it's not quite 90 degrees, when it's probably just passing the canopy rail or about at the canopy uh, bow, sorry, is when you want to begin the roll in. The key for a good dive angle is you want the velocity vector, the flight path marker, to be long on the target. That's called your aim off distance. Again, you can go into all kinds of uh, uh, planning tables and you can get specific aim off distance in feet. But again, you're going to kind of wag it in the air uh, unless you're on a conventional bombing range that has those aim off distances marked on the ground. The key is you want that flight path marker long on the target. If it's on or short of the target, you're going to hit the ground before you get a, a release solution. So let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and roll in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically keep my eyes on the target, and I'm just going to fly in relation to that. And I'm going to pause it, and then right there, notice as that uh, flight path marker tracks across the ground, it's going to end up long on the target, which is exactly what I want. And notice my dive angle is pretty much right at 30 degrees, so that worked out almost perfectly. The other good technique is when the target reaches just about the, the, um, the two boxes, whichever way you're turning left or right, is when you want to begin your rollout. If you wait too long, you're going to have to roll back to the right. So I'm probably a little bit late, so just as that target probably reached the top of that altitude box about right there is when I want to begin the rollout. The other technique is you want to be roughly at about 4... 50 to 480 cal on the uh, on the uh, indicated airspeed, or somewhere in the 500 or so true airspeed, is, is like a good target airspeed. So normally, what I do is I'll have the throttles in mill as I as I roll in, but then as I am in my dive, I want to stand the throttles up. I don't want to go to idle, but I want to stand them up pretty much at the at the center point between mill and and um, and idle, and that'll prevent you from getting too fast or too slow. Usually, the tendency is to forget to leave them in mill, and then you start accelerating uh, as you go. So let's go ahead and take this off, and I'll pause it again. So rolling out, boom. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to roll to get the, um, the displayed impact line tracking through the target. I'm talking as I'm trying to do this, so it didn't work out as well as I wanted to. Uh, the final one is, if you look at your G, uh, is as I push over, I don't want to give it a big stick forward, but I want to be just light on the stick, just gently pushing forward to be under 1G. If I'm at 1G, it's going to end up in what's called a banana pass, where it's always constantly trying to pull the nose up. It'll work, but it's not the most uh, precise bombing. So you want a little bit less than 1G, slightly pushing the stick forward, and pickle. Over G. Over G. Yeah, sorry about that. I got a little low, so sorry I over G'd it. But you saw we basically shacked the target uh, uh, as we went around. So let's go ahead and do that one again. I'll pick another target and we'll do another another 30 degree pass. Okay, so here we are set up again. Uh, we are going to attack another target further down the runway. If you can see the uh, the little BTR at the runway intersection right here, uh, we're going to set that up again for another 30 degree. And I'll, I'll basically fly the maneuver without stopping so you can see it. And I'll try to talk through as we go. But you can see right now the, the target is roughly in line with the, um, the bottom of the handle, maybe a little bit high, which may, which may mean that I might end up in a little bit shallower dive angle, uh, but it's going to be pretty darn close. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to roll out uh, as the target approaches kind of the corner of that box. And then my goal is, is to track the target straight down the displayed impact line until the pepper reaches the target with a little bit of stick push forward, literally just a little gentle push to get somewhere in that 0.8G or so, just under 1G, and that's what we're going to try to achieve. So we will do that. Let's go ahead and take command of the HUD, and then I'll get the uh, target pod um, up to the other point. So we'll undesignate. Target pod's going to go up. That way it'll uh, you'll see where it um, designates. All right, so here we go. Rolling in. Again, I'm concentrating on the target. I'm flying the jet in relation to that spot on the ground. So as I roll in, Throttle, standing the throttles up, working to put that displayed impact line right through the target, tracking, 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 pickle. 
doing a good safe escape maneuver. Looks like I pickled a little bit long. And the uh, bomb essentially went right where the pipper went. So not bad. A little bit long bomb on that, but the, the bomb went right to where the pipper was. Uh, so overall good. Uh, looks like pretty decent parameters. So let's go ahead and uh, do a 20 degree. So I'll go ahead and uh, set us up for that. Okay, so we're set up again for another pass. This time we're going to do a 20 degree dive on that same target at that runway intersection right there. The difference here is I'm a little, notice I'm a little bit lower uh, and I'm a little bit wider. Uh, and what we're looking for is about halfway uh, down the handle is a, probably a really good reference for that 20 degree. So you notice we're pretty much wings level right now and the target is roughly at about that 20 degree spot. So same exact thing applies. I'm looking to put the target when I roll out about halfway down the, the displayed impact line. Again, I'm going to roll out when the target is uh, just before the corner of this uh, airspeed box. Stand the throttles up and then track the target and release roughly at about a 20 degree dive angle. So let's see if I can make this work. So here we go. Rolling in. Probably a little steep on this one. Okay, again, just a little bit long on this one. Not bad. Let's do that 20 degree one more time. Okay, so another pass at 20. Let's see if I can get a shack on this one. I can fly a little bit better. Rolling in on that intersection. Again, I'm flying in relation to the target. There's my 20 degrees. I'm going to boat switch aft and pickle. Pretty darn close. Good safe escape maneuver. Shack. That was much better. Again, don't stop flying the airplane while you're trying to look for your, uh, your glory. Uh, do a good uh, safe escape maneuver. That means uh, as soon as you pickle and you get bomb release, get the about 5 Gs, uh, pull the nose up to uh, 20 degrees above the horizon, and then you can begin your turn. If you don't, you potentially will get in to the frag envelope. I'll uh, demonstrate that on the, uh, on the next pass. Okay, guys, we're set up for a 10 degree high drag pass now. Typically, you don't want to do low drags at such low angles, so that's what the high drags are meant for. So let's go ahead and uh, redo this. I'll set up a, a new program. We'll go market two errors, step or C-dip, step, nose, tail. And again, for high, uh, for high drags, if you have either tail or nose tail, it's going to pull the balloon. If you select nose only, you're going to get a low drag uh, version of that bomb. So that's how you can differentiate between the two. So now we're down, uh, down here at about 2,200 feet or so. And what I want you to do is we're going to use the um, target out here at the end of the runway. You can see that. And now what you can see is, is that is about to beam the bottom of the mirror, top of the handle, somewhere in that range. That's probably a really good starting point for the, uh, for the 10 degree. So if you remember, 30 degrees is down here, somewhere between the, the canopy rail and the bottom of the handle. 20 degrees are about mid-handle. 10 degrees or somewhere around the bottom of the mirror to the top of the handle. It's going to seem unusually shallow, but it's uh, it, that's the whole point of the high drag releases. So let's go ahead and turn in. Looking for about that 10 degree wire. Little, little steep. Actually, no, it's not bad. Again, Dill's tracking. Ready, ready, pickle. That should be pretty much a shack. And we're waiting for those high drag bombs to hit. A little short. I think there's a, a little bit of a bug with the uh, ballistics on the high drags. So we'll do that one more time. This time we'll do a ripple pass, uh, and I'll have that set up. So let's go ahead and select seat it. We're going to go ripple single. I'll go ahead and ripple all five of those off. We'll set, five, we'll set 100 feet, and we'll go nose tail again for that. All right, so I'll get set up. Okay, so one last try at the uh, 10 degree uh, high drag dive. Uh, we're going to ripple five again, so I've got that all set up. I've got a ready light in the packs. Tells me I'm, uh, my packs is all satisfied and ready to go. So again, just to, just to show you one more time, you can see the target out here. I'll zoom in so you can see it. Again, that's somewhere around the bottom of the mirror, so 
top of the handle. Uh, air speed's looking good. And again, what I'm looking to do is pull the velocity vector just along with the target, and we want the target to end up somewhere around that one third of the deal rather than halfway down like you do for 20 degree and steeper. So let's see if we can make that work. And again, that, that is the ideal perfect wire if I can make that happen. So here we go, turn it in. Keeping the throttles up since it's a little bit shallower pass. I'll go ahead and undesignate so I can see it. That's about the perfect dive angle, tracking, tracking, pickle. Over G, over G. A little overzealous on my uh, pull. And a little bit long on that one. And I think I did pickle long on that. So you can see that that uh, works out uh, pretty nicely. And again, uh, I'm a little rusty on the uh, the whole conventional bombing pass. Uh, but that should give you the basics of how to get the uh, the seated bombs off. On was trying to answer a question that's come up numerous times about the C dip bombing in terms of the uh, the T rail that's displayed in the HUD. So if you look right here, I'll zoom in on it a little bit. You can see right now we've got C dip is selected and T rail is showing in the HUD. What that's saying is is that the the pipper is looking at a spot on the ground that's too far away to actually give a, an instantaneous release right now. What's going to happen is if I pickled right now with 24 seconds T-Rail, it's going to designate the spot that you physically see under the pipper. So it's going to still designate that spot, but it's basically saying it's going to take you 24 seconds to drive to a release point, which means that the CDIP is going to turn into an auto pipper as long as you hold the pickle button down and then eventually it will release the bomb on a C dip, I'm sorry, on an auto release. So it's really important that if you see T rail as you're rolling in, and this is a bit of an extreme example where I'm really shallow at 6.8 miles away, but it's not uncommon as you're rolling in to see a couple seconds T rail and you need to recognize that. So if, uh, if you see it, you know that you need to hold the pickle button down and then follow the as my steer line because the system has now turned itself into an auto release even though you started in, in C dip. So again I'll, I'll take it off pause. I'll I'll show you what that looks like. So there is ready, ready, let me turn that master arm on. Ready, ready, pickle. And then notice it's now a seat uh, an auto release. I've got to hold the button down. And again this is a bit of an extreme example. And I've got to do my best to follow the asthma steering line until the uh, bomb fall line comes down and then in theory it's going to impact the same spot as you did if you're doing a C dip. So that's what that uh, that's what that means in terms of seeing T rail displayed when you see a um, uh, that in the HUD. So let me show you another example where uh, I'm doing a normal dive Usually it happens when you're doing a dive from up high. Usually down low it doesn't occur as much. Uh, or if you're doing a very shallow dive angle, oftentimes you'll get C dip. If you steepen it up a little bit, it'll uh, it'll definitely improve. So let me let me roll back around, and I'll see if I can get T rail in the hood. You can see it's displayed right now. So only a couple seconds. And that's very normal. That's actually the way it's supposed to be. And then as I dive, notice it goes away. If I shallow it out, it comes back. So again, ready, ready, pickle. I'm gonna do my best to follow the ASL. Boom, it releases, and then it just becomes a normal release. So it's important that you understand that uh, what that T-rail is actually telling you. Let me do one more time, and what I'll show you is, there's just a couple seconds, and then if I just steepen the dive up a little bit, that will free that pipper up and then now it becomes an instantaneous release pull up, pull up, pull up, and it doesn't go into the um, into the auto. Altitude. All right, that's it. Uh, not so out for this segment. Uh, the next one, we're going to do more of a, uh, a full conventional bombing pattern and then we'll do some pop attacks at the end of that video. So we'll kind of put it all together with what we learned today. All right, guys, not so out. See you later.